Victor, let's talk about making it on the team of the week on MLS, and that must have been a joy to get that information. How great is that? Yeah, no, obviously, uh, very happy with, with making Team of the Week uh, something that it's an honor for me to be uh, with great players. Just very excited and very happy with, uh, with the call. And, and let's talk about with two other teammates, I might add. Uh, Matt Hedges and Blas Perez, two guys that have been outstanding all season long. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, um, I've had a Two great goals that he he got uh, player of the week and not holding it back in our defense. We have this both been great the whole year. Victor, let's talk about that big win against the Vancouver Whitecaps. You guys were clicking on all cylinders. How important was that win for your squad getting ready for this stretch run? Uh, a huge win for us, obviously, uh, for the playoff run. They're right underneath us and put us up eight points above them. So, I mean, it was a huge game. You saw the intensity of it, and we're just glad we got away with the three points. You know, everything, every season in MLS in the last five or six seasons uh, really gets tighter and tighter with the last seven or eight games of Victor. Uh, what has your coaches and, and your whole coaching staff said to you guys to keep you focused and to worry about one game at a time? Yeah, no, just like you said, uh, we take things one game at a time. Obviously, it's big Western rivalries. And uh, like you said, every everything's pushing the last the last couple of games to get into that playoff position. You know, Victor, uh, we had on a few weeks ago a guy that is right now opening up the eyes of all MLS, possibly could win Rookie of the Year, Tisho Akendale, a Canadian kid and a guy right now that is scoring some big goals for your squad. Talk about how him and Perez have been the one-two punch for this squad. Yeah, no, obviously, uh, Tisho has been great for us this year. Scoring some goals, uh, he has my vote for rookie of the year, obviously, and uh, he, he started up with Blas really well, learning from him. Uh, Blas has taught him a lot, and he, he really knows how to listen, and he's had a great year. Victor, talk about some of the other uh, teams uh, that you have traveled to this year uh, with FC Dallas. Obviously, when you go to the Pacific Northwest, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver, it is some great, great atmosphere in those cities on the pitch, uh, uh, outside in the stadiums, you could sense it's like a European atmosphere. How great is that? Uh, to go and play in those types of cities. Yeah, no, great cities, great teams. Uh, like you said, the atmosphere is, is awesome. On the one of the guys to learn, uh, you know, the ropes, as they say, to learn how to prepare yourself mentally week in and week out, how to, uh, you know, look at things on your own away from the team, maybe studying uh, video of games from weeks past. Who, who have you leaned on to get all that great advice this season from? Uh, this is a guy that's helped me a lot is Peter Lutin. He, uh, he's a vet. Uh, he's played in Europe. He's, I mean, he had a great career. And uh, he, he, I listen to him a lot. He teaches me a lot. Who, who, who are someone that you have tailored yourself after growing up as a youngster? Is there someone that you have always, uh, you know, watched and said, wow, this is who I want to play like? Is there a midfielder in Europe or someone that's retired that you really enjoyed watching? I would say that my all-time idol was Sinelin Sinan. Wow, like, ZZ. Growing up. Yeah, an unbelievable player. I mean, a World Cup hero, uh, a guy that uh, played with Juventus and some of the biggest squads all over, and a guy that you can learn so much from. Victor, talk about, uh, you know, now uh, getting ready for that playoff push, as you mentioned. How important is it is that you guys are all in sync on the same page, pulling in one direction that, you know, uh, it's not about an individual player on the team. It's about the team itself. Yeah, no, obviously, uh, in that last play, the playoff, uh, we're taking it slow one game at a time. Uh, we had a huge win against Vancouver. Now we're focusing on L.A. We came up short last time. But, uh, I mean, important for us to get into the playoffs. This team hasn't gotten to the playoffs in the past couple of years, so it'll be a big step for us in the right direction. Talk about who has been your toughest competition for you uh, this year. Has it been uh, L.A., as you mentioned? Has it been Seattle? Has it been uh, Real Salt Lake? Who, who has given you the most problems this year? Yeah, no, I would say that the, the, the team probably have definitely, we've had good matches against them, uh, Seattle, 
Rafa leg, a leg. I mean, last time we were in LA, we fell a little short, but um, it, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a great game. Uh, hopefully, we we get the three points, and we're gonna we're gonna push for for the glory for the win. You know, Victor, when you're out there playing, it, it's all a blur a lot of times. But when you sit back and, and you can watch some of the games and dissect some of the games, do you got to take a second and say to yourself, "Wow, uh, you know, I just played against Landon Donovan or Keen." or I played against Martins or Dempsey or, you know, whoever, Kyle Beckerman of Real Salt Lake. Does it seem to you surreal sometimes? Yeah, no, obviously you mentioned some, some top of the world-class players. And, uh, yeah, I mean, when I, when I play against them, it's unbelievable. I, sometimes I still can see, uh, think I'm dreaming. But uh, it's, it's, it's a good standard for me to, to see how I match up against players like Dempsey, players like Beckerman. Like this weekend, where we're going to play Keane last time, we could play Donovan. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, you know, so the time that Donovan will be on the pitch, I guess maybe Donovan and I will be on the pitch, maybe. You know, you, you were signed as a homegrown player by, uh, by uh, FC Dallas in July of 2010, I believe. And this is something of a success story for you to, to really uh, explain and to talk to the young guys down there uh, that are, 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 you know, paying their dues and, and working hard day in and day out, that it is uh, an opening, uh, a possibility, a dream can happen like you uh, have experienced and being signed as a homegrown player. How great is it? to know that you work so hard there and that you get repaid back by now being on the first team? You know, obviously that dream come true. Uh, I've been playing in Dallas since I was, just like I remember, five years old and uh, growing up, I always imagined, I always dreamed of being a professional soccer player. Uh, actually, to, well, before I see Dallas, Dallas Burn, I would go to the Cotton Bowl here in Dallas. And I mean, just amazing, an amazing experience, unbelievable. And like you said, I mean, it can come true, it came true for me and hard work pays off. 